What's up, sisters? Welcome to the Period Whisperer podcast. I'm Bria. I'm your host. If you're new, I'm so happy you are here. I'm your perimenopause and menopause sister, your holistic trainer, hormone specialist, translator of your female body. I'm a recovering people pleaser and hustle addict turned body whisperer and hormone decoder. And I am here to help you de-stress your body, decode what it is saying, become the CEO of it, and own your own health, energy, and weight loss again. This show is for you, the overwhelmed, overworked, underappreciated step woman who dreams of a body they feel strong, energetic, and sane in. The woman who knows that she shouldn't just wave the white aging flag and believes in a body and life of peace, love, and purpose. But you don't just know how to get there yet. So if you are stuck in your body, your energy, your life, you are in the right spot. Let's lean in and learn what our bodies are saying to us. Hey there, sister. Welcome to this episode of the Period Whisperer podcast. I'm your host, perimenopause guide and fellow perimenopause struggler, Bria Gad. And I'm so excited to have you here for this extra special interview. Let me ask you this. Have you ever felt like you had to starve yourself to obtain whatever goal you were looking for with your health? Or maybe you feel like you're in a constant cycle of self-sabotage, that if you do achieve your goal, you'll never be able to maintain it. If you've ever, if all you've ever really wanted is some body freedom, then this is going to be a great episode for you. I am beyond excited to share a conversation with you today with my client and friend, Ilsa Hildebrand, a busy mom of three and wife with a career and even someone who in her spare time, I know, raises puppies. (laughs) Ilsa's story of frustration and how she feels in her body and the impacts of perimenopause has been one that has felt like it's gone on for a while for her. And today she's here to share some hope and what has worked for her. So welcome, Ilsa. I'm so grateful that you're here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, thank you. You do raise, do you raise puppies or I feel like you're always, someone's always having this last year, I was breeding puppies. I'm taking a break right now. I'm not sure if I'm going to continue it because it is a lot of work and it's heartbreaking to rehome them. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, that you're right. Like it's like you're, you know, you you're a wife, you're a mother of three, you have a career. Like that's a big, that's another big thing to do. So I can imagine it's way more work than any of us ever understand. Um, I think most of my work right now is actually my dogs because I have six. Six my dogs. Yeah. Okay. So you're so yeah. you're talking to a very busy human here. <laughs> so maybe yeah. let's talk about that then a little bit more about your life, about your career, your family responsibilities, your stress levels and age if you're open to it. Yeah, well, I can't believe I'm 45, honestly. Um I think where did the time go? Like gone. But anyways, no, I've got six dogs. I just um got a couple of gerbils and a few rats too. Oh my god! I love animals. If honestly, if I had the money, I'd have kind of like a petting zoo for everybody. Oh, I love that. That's, that's where I get my dopamine from. Uh, <laughs> and did you grow up on a of- farm or like with with animals, or you just it's just a natural love for you? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted. I've just. I used to say when I was younger, when I get my own house, I'm gonna have two cats, two dogs, two birds, and like two of everything. <laughs> I love that. Uh, now that I'm getting older, it's a little tough. Plus, my husband wants to have a little more freedom. Yeah. You know, kids are getting older. Yeah. Yeah, it's not the same. You can't just up and leave when you have six dogs, can you? Yeah. No, no you can't. <sighs> but my sister's pretty good at helping me out. So <laughs> She also loves animals. So she's like, I'll watch them. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Do you feel yeah. like, like, obviously, you know, as you say, this gives you a dopamine hit, but do you feel like all the responsibility of everything has been stressful for you these last few years? Um, when I introduced the puppies, yes, mm-hmm. because it's constant cleaning, mm. like I'm always clean. And then I acquired another dog that's not a chihuahua and she was also a puppy and she was hard to potty train. Yeah. So like, I still let my dogs make mistakes in my house, but that's my fault for being lazy. <laughs> So I'm always cleaning up after them and mm-hmm. I don't know how I manage to keep my house clean, but I do. You're a good mama. That's amazing. Well, it's hard. Like, I guess for me, keeping my house in order is the hardest part mm-hmm. of my life because my 16 year old is more like a tornado. 
<laughs> so everywhere she goes, she leaves stuff laying around. And I'm like, oh, my God, come on. Like, I've got one of those. Rent. Yeah, I'm like, you can help out a little bit more. But that's what I'm working on. My husband really helped me over the holidays because oh. I was feeling very overwhelmed with everything because I'm the one who hosts. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, so you also hosted the holidays over this time? Yeah, I always do. Oh, gosh, it's a lot. So yeah. Tommy, this you said this is your youngest is 16. Is this is this leaving a tornado behind you unique to your 16 year old, or is this just a is this a phase that they all go through? I, I'm I'm asking for a friend. They all have kind of gone through it, but she's definitely the worst. Oh, okay. Like she's a uh, slob. <laughs> but does that mean they grow out of it? I mean, I was kind of a pig too when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say quite as bad as her, but I see me and her. So I'm like, well, maybe she will. Uh, I find that you move out on your own. Yeah. Um, then you have like, it's your space. It, you, It's your responsibility. Yeah. And when they're at home with mom and dad, they're like, Ugh, whatever. They'll just clean up after me. Yeah. Things she's magically like, get cleaned up. <laughs> she's more stubborn than I am. Let's just say it that way. Because mm-hmm. I like try and wait it out, wait it out. Because she says, I'll clean it this day. I'll clean it. She never cleans it. So I, of course, give in because I can't take it anymore. But yeah. And get it done. I know that works so well. So well. So all this to say, it's obvious you're not, you don't, you have a very full life, we'll say very busy. And I work full time. And you work full time, which is a lot. And yeah, so it's like you have six dogs, three kids, a husband, and you work full time. So, you know, not bored, not sitting around eating bonbons. (laughs) Well, sometimes. Well, you see. (laughs) I have this uh, Invisalign stuff. It's not actually Invisalign. It's uh, clear correct. So that helps me not eat all the time too. Oh, hey, there's a hack for anybody. It's it's straight teeth and you can't eat in between meals. There you go. I love that. So let's get into it a little. Like when, when, how had you been feel? like, how were you feeling your body when we first started connected and, and maybe when you first started considering joining a program like Midlife Mojo, like what was keeping and in your body? I was exhausted, feeling disgusting in my body, like literally disgusting. Like I couldn't stand looking at myself anymore. Mm. Um, like I look like to me, I kept telling myself, I look like the marshmallow man. Like I had no muscle tone, no you know, and my, I was so exhausted all the time. And I was like, I'm never going to lose weight. It just kept going up, creeping up, creeping up. And I was like, what is going on? I felt completely out of control. Yeah. Yeah. I know that feeling. Were you sleeping well at night? Um, I'd wake up to go to the bathroom, but I wouldn't say I was sleeping bad. Yeah. But you were just exhausted. And I always felt tired. Yeah. When I wake up. And I have for years. Mm-hmm. And what had you been trying, like, what had you tried to lose weight, to have more energy? What had you tried up until that point? Everything. <laughs> weight watchers. I've tried, because I do have low thyroid and I have Hashimoto. Okay. So I've tried stuff like that in the past, but it's very, very restricting permanently. Mm-hmm. Basically, no gluten, no dairy. And I mean, this kind of, this program also kind of starts that way you know, like elimination of inflammatory foods, which is fine. It's not that hard to, to do it temporarily. Yeah. Um, but to maintain it can be, especially if you have people around you that like all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We don't live in a vacuum, right? I always think that's so important. It's like, sure. It's much easier to do a lot of these things on your own for some people, but when you have other people to cook for other people to consider other people with food around or habits, it's, it's challenging. Yeah. Yeah. And I find when I eat like the bat or inflammatory foods in moderation or very rarely, they don't bother me. But if I continue to eat them, that's when my body's like, no, 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 that's enough. Yeah. So, and that's one thing I really realized in this program. Mm. It's like once I eliminated it it, or most of it, I should say, because I think I still had coffee. No, I didn't. Whatever. I cheated a little bit. (laughs) I think that's important to say though, because I always say to people too, like, look, I mean, sure, we want to shoot for the best we can do, but I have personally, like, this is how what's obviously what's worked for me and what's worked for hundreds of my clients, but I have never been quote unquote a hundred percent in any of my ventures for I think it's unrealistic. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't need to be a hundred percent. You yeah. just yeah, need to do your best long enough, I think. Is I think really- I lost just about 10 pounds in the inflammatory phase. In the inflammatory phase, you lost 10 pounds. 
like in the inflammatory phase and kind of halfway into phase two. Oh, wow. That's and then amazing. by phase three, like I think total, I've lost about 16 pounds. Oh my gosh, Elsa, that's amazing. And that's from like gaining and gaining and gaining. And I was always one of those people when I was younger was when I did something, I went all out. Like exercising, it was all high intensity. It was working, you know, pushing hard. And if I didn't push hard, it wasn't going to work. Yeah. I so know this was honestly probably the hardest part was no exercise during this period. No, you know, like, or very relaxed. And I'm like, oh my God, I feel like I just really need to sweat and get my heart going. And it's so, yeah, that's a real hard. mind, you know what, you know? And I went through the same thing where it's like, but all I've ever known is that I have to do more to burn those calories. And so to yeah. do less and then actually get results is a little bit like, what? I know. Well, I started kickboxing in the pandemic. Yeah. And that's when I really started putting on the weight and I couldn't figure it out. I was like, they're like, you need to eat more. I'm like, are you kidding me? So they're trying to get me to eat more carbs, more, you know, things that my body, I don't think wanted. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because you do learn to listen to your body, Hmm. but like I was eating more. And then of course, if you stop doing it, you don't really stop eating more. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I just kept yeah. gaining weight. And I was like, okay, well, I can see that my muscles are firming up and whatever, but I was always exhausted. I would mm-hmm. do it like three times a week and I couldn't understand how some people could do it twice a day <sighs> in a row. Yeah. And I was like, are you insane? And like do it every day. And I was like, I wanted to be those people. I wanted to have that energy. And I was so jealous. Yeah. And that's why I was starting to feel hopeless too, mm-hmm. because I was exhausted. I was like, I couldn't do anything else in my day. Like my husband would want to go for a walk and I'd be like, I don't have the energy. Like mm-hmm. I didn't have the energy for anything else. Yeah. So and you, <laughs> by the sounds of it, even without knowing you more, like with all that you do and accomplish, like you're, you're a driven person. So to be limited by your energy when you're a driven person, I don't know, I, I would imagine is really frustrating. Extremely. Yeah extremely yeah but when I started doing this and I actually I started yoga just before I joined this program yeah yeah and doing yeah I was doing it well three times a week I think but I wasn't really doing any of the other stuff yeah um so I wasn't gaining anymore so that was a plus Mm -hmm. but I wasn't losing either Mm -hmm. and then when I started this I was like all of a sudden it just started like coming off my muscle tone seemed better. I had more energy. I was like, I can actually go to yoga three or four times a week, like hour long and hot yoga. And I usually hate heat, mm-hmm. but I loved it. Like I sweat and I felt amazing. And I was like, oh my Lord. I was like my body. I could just feel the strength slowly coming back. And it was so empowering. And I thought, wow. And I was like, wow, you weren't kidding. Like yoga really is awesome. But then when you're doing the diet with it, yeah, it's just like, my body was just like, okay, yeah. <laughs> I'll yeah. start go, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's, did you feel, you felt motivated by that? Like, it's like when you're, yeah, yeah such a good feeling, isn't it? When it's, it yeah. to... My body or like my brain, I should say, you know, how the, it's like the go, go, go. As soon as I was like given the okay for weights, I overdid it because they had this challenge in November and it was a 21 day challenge. So I tried to get in 21 classes and I was sick at the beginning of November. Mm -hmm. So I was like doubling up on classes and it's hot and I probably wasn't drinking enough water. And then I wasn't really following my diet like I should have been, you know, like, cause I was introducing food back. So I kind of, it was almost like no holes barred. Thank God it didn't really gain anything back. I was still losing, but like, and then I plateaued for a bit in between in the phase two middle part, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And then I started losing again. Mm. So, but this is motivation for me to do it again. Yes. Like started all over again. And now that I know more, especially with the phase three, um, like the luteal phase, that was so confusing for me initially because I had a hysterectomy last December. Yeah. I kept my ovaries and I was pretty sure my ovaries had kicked the bucket after that, even though they're there. But I don't think so because I started feeling it when you talked about, you know, your energy ebbs and flows. And I was like, holy crap, this last week I've been feeling exhausted or hungry or whatever. So I think my hormones are still there. They are. Like they're still fluctuating. Yeah. So 
And then, so I tried to do it by the moon phases, but it didn't really fit with what my body was doing. Yeah. So I, so for me, it's a little trickier because I have to just try and figure out what my body's doing. Yeah. And I had to listen to my body more. But yeah. you did. I think that's what's so, you know, like, even just to hear you talk now, like we all, like we all have moments where we maybe just dive into a challenge and we don't realize it's too much or, but the only way we know it's too much is if we try and then we listen. Yeah. So like, I can hear you recognizing in yourself what is being said. And I mean, like, to me, that's one of the best gifts of all to be like, oh, to, to listen, trust it. I don't know about for you, but like, that's always a hard piece. It's like your body's yeah. exhausted and you're, we want to just push it harder. And we're like, oh no, I guess it means I, I need an actual break. No, I did push it throughout that. I, I got my 21 classes plus in, mm. in like three weeks. Mm-hmm. So I really overdid it. And my body just said, nope. And so for literally like the next week or so after I could do nothing. Mm. I didn't even go to yoga. I was just like, I need to rest. So I had to rest. Mm-hmm. But I was like, okay, I'm never doing that again, you yeah. know. Um, but I just really wanted to get entered for a draw. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Driven right there. I found it. That's it. <laughs> we can tell. So I was like, oh, I didn't win anyway, but <laughs> but yeah. that's awesome. So I mean, uh, you know, you already mentioned that one of the things that felt unusual or confusing was this like, okay, peel back and no working out during this first phase. Was there anything else that you like were, that was suggested to you in the program that you were like, that seems backwards or seemed confusing? Mm, I guess some of the, the way to eat during each phase was a little hard for me to grasp too, mm-hmm. like to remember, I guess not grasp, but to remember yeah. too. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it made sense Yeah, and it did help when you follow the plan, it helps. Yeah. And that's the thing, like, because we do have unlimited access, mm-hmm. we can go back and start over or do it a little longer if we need to, or, you know, so yeah. that's what I plan on doing come the new year after new year's because junk food. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's, yeah, I plan on starting from day one again. Yes. I love that. So, okay. So how are you, listen, you know, you've talked about a bunch of things, you know, you've lost 16 pounds, which is amazing. How are you feeling now? Like your energy, everything, you know, everything compared to your Hashimoto's. I don't know if you've had any further testing, like how are you? Yeah. How are you feeling now? My thyroid is up. So it's in the high side of normal, which is good. That's good. My iron is up because I don't bleed anymore. Yeah. Okay. That's good. I don't have to take supplements for that anymore. Um, what else? I, I say my energy is definitely better. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I know you mentioned a few times your clothes were fitting better and that's yes. always a good feeling. Yes. Actually, my body, I can actually look at myself in the mirror. Like, I still don't love what I see, you know. Um, I still find, you know, like, oh, okay, I'm fluffy still. But mm. my body is toned up. I'm not bloated anymore. Like, my rings fit me. And they didn't fit me for so long. Yeah. Like I can really tell in my hands and my face and my feet when I can Uh actually see like definition in my ankles and like that I'm not retaining all that water anymore. Uh And I don't feel as stiff anymore. You know, just like just those little things that you don't really notice until all of a sudden one day you're doing something and it's like, hey, that didn't hurt. Or, wow, I did that for a long time or, you know. Like yesterday, cleaning up my house, like purging didn't hurt me. Like I was a little sore because of my hip, my sciatic's bugging me, but I was still able to do it and function and yeah, get up the next day and do it again, you know? Uh, accomplish things, which when you're a driven person, like accomplishment is a huge part of your dopamine hit, I think. Oh yeah, it is. Oh yeah. That's, that's amazing. That's, no, I'm so happy to hear that's that really I'm the best program I've ever been on. Oh. It's really the realistic and you're so down to earth. You're so easy to contact, so accessible. And I know that's probably a lot for you, like, cause that's your job, right? Like there's probably people coming at you all the time, but I really appreciate it when you do answer me. And I kind of like your voice, voice mails or whatever. Oh, good. <laughs> My voice like, messages. Like hearing your voice messages is kind of nicer than actually, you know, seeing a text. Oh, I'm so glad. Well, you, you know, you were such a engaged part of the group, which I love and appreciate so much. So, you know, I think 
it's easy. It's easy for us to fall out of practice of something when life is so busy. But I always find the more I lean in to programs that I invest in or things, you know, you get the support when you need it, right? It's always there. So this is a lot to do with the work you put in and how you showed up. And for that long, like it can be hard to get distracted. And I think we all did. Yes. Life life distracted us, whatever, you know, but just to get back on track and do the best you can, that's all you can do. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's so cool to hear you say, you know, like we know we're, you know, we get a bit derailed at the holidays and everything and you're going to get kind of right back to it. Like you're now in this fat, you know, this fat burning mode and it's just going to kind of keep ticking. So even if you're not feeling amazing with what you're seeing in your reflection or how you think you're the potential your body has, it's coming. Like it's only been three months. Now it's like, wait till you see the next six to 12 months. It'll be incredible. Exactly. And the days that I have eaten crappy, which aren't that many, right? Like, so I pretty much stay on plan and I'm good with my good, healthy food, my whatever. But then like the other day I had my nieces over and we did like a craft day and we made it an appy day. So it was like all junk food. Yeah. You're just, you know, munching all day and no weight gain. Yeah. Like, not ah. even water retention. I was like, yay. <laughs> That's amazing. Such yeah. a good, because then you're like, your body's working, right? It's doing what we, what it should do. It should respond quickly yeah. to things. So, ah, uh, I'm so happy. I realize it's not something that I can say, oh, my body's not gaining weight. Let's just keep doing this. Cause I know eventually my body's going to say, no, no, no. <laughs> you know? But yeah. yeah, like I can actually like indulge a little bit and not feel like crap about it. Yes, which is, I think, life. Like, it, sure, if you're going to be one of those people who really never feels like having those things, I think go for it. But I'm, I've am i never become one of those people. That's never happened for me. I still yeah. really like to enjoy, yeah, the things, you know, the birthday cake and the and the holiday yeah. treats and the things that ebb and flow. And, and we want to know that we can do it without, like, we want to know that we can go on holiday or enjoy holiday without that fear of falling completely off a wagon or com- gaining all this weight and just feeling frustrated and stuck. And you can still go on holiday and eat right most of the time. Yes, definitely. And your body starts, I think when you start to listen to those whispers as you have, you start to, it becomes easier to make decisions that feel good instead of ones that kind of tick your body off. My sugar cravings are not completely gone, but almost. Like, oh. And it's crazy because I got so much chocolate for Christmas and I was like giving it away. Oh, and I put stuff up in the car. My husband's like, aren't you going to eat that? I'm like, just because it's there doesn't mean I have to eat it. Yeah. It can last me a long time. Like what? (laughs) He doesn't get it. (laughs) But are you ever like, who is this person? Like, how did I become this person when you know you used to be like, I don't know, I used to be insatiable about those things. So does it actually surprise? When I was younger, I was a very big health food junkie. (sighs) And I would freak out if any sugar came in my house. Like freak out. But um, that was also with my anxiety that had a lot, like everything was like, but now like, because I'm on fluoxetine to help me with my anxiety, I stopped worrying about anything, like stopped worrying about what I was eating. And that also helped me put on the weight. Right. And even when I tried to get back on track, it just wasn't moving. And then I realized also my age. Yeah. You know, are you also on thyroid medication then for your Hashimoto's? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's good. I like, you know, it's it's good to share this because I know a lot of people question whether they'll be able to release weight if they're on, you know, anxiety medication or thyroid medication or other medications. And, you know, obviously you're proof that that's possible, which is so oh, yeah. good to hear. And I have like, I'm, I know I have cysts or I had a cyst on one of my ovaries. Yeah. So oh, isn't that PO, PCOS or whatever? Yeah, that's uh, one of the signs. So yeah. I've got that too then. You know, Mm -hmm. like I have hormonal issues in general and I'm not, I mean, I would say I'm still classified as obese, like in the BMI books, but I don't know anything. (laughs) I know you say that, but I'm looking at you right now. And I I can still use weight, you know, and I can still be healthy. And now I know it's possible. And I've seen many people do it. It's just, you have to do it the right way. Yeah. Yeah. And then once you get on that path, you know, it's, it's a good feeling because you're not only are you honoring like the integrity of your body by doing things the right way, but then you're being rewarded for your good behavior. And I think that's such a good feeling. It's funny because it sounds like, especially for my husband hearing some of my, you know, podcast or the podcast and stuff that I listen to with with you, he's like, (laughs) we're magical. (laughs) 
But women are magic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, he thinks it's so cheesy. He's like, you have to eat funny. The guys, like some people just don't get it. Yeah. And it does sound almost cheesy to have to eat this certain way. And you don't have to, but you can stay in the same rut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I think that's the point. It's like at some point we need to, I think our body is often telling us like, this isn't working for you yeah. and we have to kind of just accept it and not go with the norm anymore, but do what, what works for us. And and I think that's a hard thing for a lot of women. I like that. It's funny recognized, especially like with my coming of age, you should, I could say, you know, because I never knew or heard about anything like this. It was just something that happened, right? You just uh, go through the change. You just get fat, <laughs> get old. Yeah. You dry out. Yeah. That's what it is. That's like, that's yeah. what we've always been told. So I love, I'm so grateful that you're part of this revolution to change that. And, and yes, yeah, remind all- my friends about you. Um, Telling my friends, they're like, oh, I'm trying to lose weight. And they're all starting, like some of them are a little younger. And I'm like, okay, you wouldn't believe this, but about 35-ish, I'm like, you start changing. And that makes sense. Because when I look back at what happened to my body and my mind and everything, I was like, that's why, you know? (laughs) Yeah. And you think, gosh, if I'd only known, right? If I could, if I knew this earlier, I wouldn't have gone so far down this other path. So it would be nice to learn earlier. And that's, you know, I think... Anyway, you're a great example of that. So I'm so grateful. Thank you for being here. Now, if one more thing, if you don't mind, if I ask, but what do you think women going through? So women that are starting to go through this, their friends that you're talking to, or anyone listening to this podcast, starting to go through this hormonal shift, wanting to feel better. What do you think they really need to know? If you could share like one key thing, like what's been the biggest aha moment for you through this journey? If they don't need to be perfect, that they leaning into it and just giving what they can. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I think investing in something like this is amazing and do it when you have time. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be all on time. Like, I mean, I sure wasn't, but I know that going into it next time, I know what to expect more and it's going to be easier for me. And every time I do it, it's going to be easier. It's just, and honestly, like, why wouldn't you want your body to feel amazing? Yeah. Yeah. And your mind. mm Mm-hmm. In your mind. And, you know, we don't talk about this enough, but there is, I mean, when you talked earlier on so vulnerably about that feeling of feeling disgusting in your body, like that's a massive yeah. mental load that consumes a lot of our energy all day. Mm-hmm. We can't be magic if we're thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much, Elsa. I'm so grateful for you sharing your story. I'm so glad that that we're connected and to call you my friend and, and thank you uh, for having me. Yeah, I really appreciate you having here, you being here. Thank you. <laughs> All right, sisters, you've heard it from Ilsa. You know that there's so much option and, and opportunity and, and possibility out there for you. So go out, be more in your life and not just less on a scale. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Thank you so much for joining me on the Period Whisperer podcast. I want to encourage you to reach out to me directly and message me if there are topics or things you're struggling with so we can address those right where you are at. And of course, if you loved this episode, if you learned something, make sure to share it with your friends and please rate and review it wherever you get your podcasts.